Virtual reality can take you to the most amazing places or to hell and back for those who have seen the horrors of war. We've created 14 different worlds that can represent the different types of places that people have been traumatized by. So an Afghan market, a rural Afghan village. Here at the University of Southern California, PTSD is the target post-traumatic stress disorder. Victims reliving the worst times of their lives by choice. If I blow something up, actually feeling the vibration of that. And it's realistic, even down to the smells. Garbage, spice, burning rubber, BO, all pumped out. It has to be real enough to activate the emotion of anxiety without pushing someone over the edge and to help them take that feeling and talk about it. And to instead of when they see something that reminds them of the trauma, they run the other way, they avoid, that just perpetuates continued avoidance. We're trying to help people overcome the avoidance, both physically and emotionally and cognitively. It's still experimental, but it is being watched very closely. Therapy has gone high tech. So what's your experience been with it so far? Uh, it's been great. <laughs> and they love it here at Cedars Sinai Hospital in Los Angeles because it's helping patients like Hymer. He's got cancer. The pain's pretty bad because I have a tumor pinching my nerves. But he's using VR to block out the agony. So you're in pain, hospital comes to you and says, well, try this VR headset. Surely you must have been a bit skeptical. Yeah, I didn't think it was going to help that much, but it helps uh, distract me from the pain and... Actually, it's pretty fun. If you focus enough into, like, trying to score and go through the levels, you're kind of just focus on the game more than the pain. Well, I mean, obviously, throughout, sometimes you do feel pain, but you kind of just brush it off and just keep playing and kind of keep focused. Around 500 patients have been trying VR out here, a kind of digital anaesthetic, and it's working, apparently. We found, on average, it reduces pain by about 24 to 25 percent. Although even the doctors don't quite know how. The simplest theory is it's just distraction. It's like it's shining a bright spotlight right into the brain and almost overwhelming it with signals. So it runs interference with the brain because the brain is so uh, immersed in the experience that it's unable to simultaneously process the pain signals that are coming from the body. What's remarkable here is that even though this technology can cost thousands, maybe even hundreds of thousands of dollars to develop, it's being delivered on equipment that you or I could buy from pretty much any electronic store, meaning if you've got a relevant condition, you can be treated pretty much wherever you feel most comfortable. Whatever you do, do not jump. No danger of that. I hope you're not afraid of heights. The ledge is pretty terrifying. One more step. There you go. <laughs> I'm 500 feet up in the air. Oh, I can't do it. <laughs> I know it's not real, but it still feels... This is the brain, my brain, being hijacked by the company developing this tech, working with the hospital. Even though I am fully aware that I'm standing in an office, there are people all around me, the thought of taking that step over the edge is absolutely paralyzing. And it's not even 100% realistic, deliberately. The closer you get to reality, to making it real, then the person actually starts to notice the difference between reality and the virtual world, and it actually breaks that cognitive load. So you either got to be you know, more animated on that side, or it's got to be spot on, almost like real video. For the medical industry, this is still an unknown, and there is another potential issue when it comes to mass adoption. The regulation's a big issue because, you know, as an investor, you can't, you, you might see a great idea and everything, but then you sort of say, but, but, you know, the regulation for this, and the you know, it, and it just it throws up these roadblocks. But the difference between this and traditional medicine, simple. If it doesn't work or the patient feels a little bit of nausea or something like that, just close your eyes and take it off. A new vision, still a little blurry in how it works, but virtual reality seemingly helping hide the pain, both mental and physical, in a very real way. Phil Lavelle, CGTN, Los Angeles.